I decided to start with Shiny Charmander because he's so adorable and he evolves into a ginormous black dragon. That is because this is not any ordinary Charmander. This is a shiny Charmander, which means it's going to evolve into a shiny Charizard, which is a big black dragon. So let's go ahead and check his IVs. He actually has pretty solid IVs, 80%. Wait, that's actually sick. He's got really good speed, really good special attack, good defense, good HP. Honestly, this is a really, really, really strong Charmander. So what I'm going to do in this first episode is actually train this Charmander up and hopefully evolve it maybe into a Charmeleon. Well, definitely into a Charmeleon, but hopefully we can get that amazing black Charizard in today's episode. What is that noise? What on earth am I hearing? What is that? Oh my gosh, that is so disgusting. But anyway, guys, this is going to be the start of a brand new series. I haven't done a series on Pixelmon in so long, and I was just going through my old videos, and I missed it so much. I used to have so much fun doing these series videos. I think I'm about to die. No! But yeah, I just miss playing Pixelmon and progressing and, and competing with other players on the server. So today is where my journey begins. You see, the server makes it so it's not really just about catching Pokemon and training them, but it's about getting extremely strong Pokemon and... Wait, is this like a... Is this a custom textured Hone Edge? Or am I tripping? Doesn't this thing look crazy? What is this? I don't know, but I'm going to at least try to catch it with the few Pokeballs that I have. Oh, I actually have a decent bit. But like I said, because we're playing on the server, it's not just catching as many Pokemon as we can. I mean, caught on the first try. Let's go. But there's a bunch of tournaments on the server where you have to compete against other players. There is the War Zone, of course, which you guys probably know about. But if you are new to the channel, the War Zone is an area where you have to have all level 100 Pokemon. And there's a ton of very rare and legendary Pokemon that spawn there. However, if you do battle another player, the winner of that battle gets to steal a Pokemon from the loser. So it's really a high risk, high reward. And I most certainly plan on going to the War Zone in this series, which is definitely a little bit scary considering I do have a shiny Charmander on my team already. But what is this Hone Edge? I've never seen this before. Why does it look like that? Please, someone tell me like that there's something weird about this. Hone like this is not a normal Hone Edge, right? Like it's got cool designs on it. It almost looks like it's corrupted or something. It looks like a shadow texture. I'm not even sure what that is, but it is really cool. And Angel Slash is actually a really good Pokemon. So I might end up not using that specific Hone Edge, but maybe breeding it into a better Aegis Lash. But I'm most definitely going to be doing a lot of breeding and training and trading and, and buying things on the GTS in this series to try to really get the best Pokemon team that I possibly can. But it's been so long since I've actually started a new series, like a raw series where I just play the game, have fun, compete on the server, and do all of that fun stuff. For the past year or so, most of my videos have mostly just been like mini game stuff or 100 day stuff. And I feel like I sort of lost touch with the community a little bit because the biggest reason that these series are so much fun is I get to actually play them with you guys since you guys can also join me on the server. I already have an idea of what I want to do with my base, but first things first, I have to find a really good area to build in, not just for me, but for you guys as well if you do plan on joining. But what I want to do is actually build like a sky island slash sky base type thing because I think it'd be really cool if the whole community builds like sky islands together and we're just sort of like a sky city. I don't know. I think that would be so sick. And also guys, I don't really know entirely what team that I want to build quite yet, but it is going to be pretty important that I have a strong team if I do plan on competing in tournaments and war zone and all that other stuff. So if you have any suggestions of any Pokemon that you would like me to catch and use, be sure to definitely comment them down below. I'm going to try to catch Pokemon that you guys all want me to. This way, the team is more of just like a communal team. It's not just my team, but it's going to be our team. And after just a couple minutes of grinding already, Charmander is level 15, meaning he only needs one more level to evolve into a Charmeleon. And at that point, he's like kind of almost sort of at a Charizard already. So we are making phenomenal progress already in this first episode. And also, if you guys didn't know, Smash MC, which is the network that I'm playing on, does have a bunch of fusion Pokemon 
meaning that you can actually fuse two Pokemon together to get one super amazing Pokemon. And one of those fusions is a Charizard and a Zekrom and a Charizard and an Aggron. Meaning that when we eventually do get our Charizard, we will have the option to fuse it with other Pokemon such as Aggron and Zekrom. So that would be insanely cool if we could pull that off. And there we go. Charmander has leveled up to level 16, meaning he will evolve. I don't know <laughs> where the animation is so my editor will add the end <laughs> we'll add an animation for you of him evolving well, there we go there he is yeah chameleon all right i ended up nicknaming him zardius i originally had darth zardius i think that sounds cooler and is cooler but that'll be his full name and his nickname will just be zardius welcome to the gang boy oh we just got an acrobatic level, so there's another feature of the server is we do have skills so not just acrobatics but there's catching breeding mining, a bunch of different skills that you can level up to get different rewards and abilities and stuff. So I'll definitely be grinding those most likely off camera, but it's more of a late game feature if you like max them out because you can get some really awesome bonuses and buffs if you do so. But definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, here we go. Here is a nice plains biome, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much where I build my base since we're going to be doing it in the sky together. But I feel like this is a nice little area. So let's do slash set home, make this my home. So now I can just go back to slash home whenever I want. But eventually, we're going to build a sky island where hopefully you guys will join me. All right, I'm going to go to the slash warp training area because this is an area that is supposed to expedite your leveling process, meaning you should be able to level up pretty quickly here. So there are a couple of trainers. I can just send out Pokemon. I can, for example, Dragon Breath these guys and pretty much smoke them and get a whole bunch of XP. And as you can see, this is most certainly way more effective than going out in the wild and just training off things there. I don't know why I didn't do this right away. And there we go. After about 10 minutes or so of training Zardius, we did manage to get him to level 36, meaning he should evolve right after this battle of Celios if they don't kill me. Uh, he just used rest. Are you serious? And there we go. Zardius is evolving. Again, I don't know why the evolution animation is glitched and bugged, but oh, we can see the top of his head. Look at his head. And there we go. There is the dragon that we have been looking for. Look at him. How beautiful he is! The big fire and flying dragon Charizard. Let's go, dude. That is so sick. And the reason I'm most excited for this, by the way, is I can now fly on him. Check this out, dude. Let's go. That is so sick. Imagine eventually when we get like our entire village of floating island bases and we're just flying around on our shiny Charizard checking out everyone's bases. That's going to be so cool. Ooh, okay. So the boss tower is an area on the server that spawns a bunch of boss Pokemon. And it seems like there is a floor that spawns grass and fighting Pokemon, which is literally perfect for Zardius because he can just air slash and pretty much one shot all of them. And the reason this is so important is it gives us really good rewards. For example, this TM right here. But not only does it give us TMs, it also gives us a whole bunch of money as well, and just other items that we can sell in general. So I think staying here, look, we just got a Sunstone, 200 bucks, XP candies. So I think if we could just stay here and grind the boss tower just a little tiny bit, that will make a ton of progress in a very short period. The problem is these bosses are actually incredibly strong, like this Levin is level 67, so I'm, I'm struggling quite a bit to actually take this guy out. But it is an epic ball, so eventually if I do take him out, I should get some pretty good rewards. And I wasn't gonna do this, but now that the Levini is really pulling my leg here, I'm gonna start using some of my XP candies and my rare candies on my Zardius to see if he can eventually take these guys out. The reason I have these rare candies, by the way, is when you join the server, you are given some. For some reason, I have 46 or 48 though. I don't really know why I had so many. I think someone must have giving it to me. Honestly, I have no idea why. Hopefully that's enough though. Hello, Levini. Oh, and we burned it. I think that's it. I think that means it should die now. Yes, let's go. We did it. And we got one rare candy for it. And an XPL though. That's pretty good. And $500. Let's go. Getting money is so important on the server because that's going to allow us to buy not only a bunch of building materials for building a house, which really isn't too, too important, but it's going to allow us to buy battle items to make our Pokemon better. And it's going to allow us to just buy Pokemon in general from the GTS. If you do slash GTS, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff here. And this is what other people 
people are selling on the server. Just like the Zapdos, which is listed for $40,000. Oh, and we just got leftovers from a drop. That is so good. Leftovers is a health item that after every single turn, you get 1 16th of your health back. So spending time in the boss tower, I think is going to be pretty essential if I want to end up building a really strong team. Ooh, I just got Dynamax candy. I kind of forget exactly how that works, but I do know that you need Dynamax candy in order to Dynamax. So hopefully we can do that at some point. We could get a shiny Dynamax Charizard. That would be so epic. Oh, a Firestone as well. We're getting so many great drops. This is actually insane. Oh yeah, I forgot. Since it's the holidays, there's actually a bunch of gifts at spawn that you can right click and redeem to get some rewards. There we go. I just got a couple of rare candies from that. Now, if you guys are watching this video in a, in a little while from now, and it's not like Christmassy anymore, then these are probably going to be gone, but I would definitely recommend getting on the server as soon as possible if you're watching this when the video comes out to redeem all these rewards. All right, and now that we have a decent amount of money, let's go ahead and buy some building blocks and get our floating island started. So first, we'll start with just a couple of grass blocks, and you might be wondering, why are you getting grass blocks? That's super strange. The main reason is because when I build the island, I'm probably going to be using a lot of dirt, and then I just want to sprout some grass blocks in there so that it spreads around to the rest of the area to make the whole island grassy. Holy guacamole, there are a ton of blocks in here to buy. I'm going to pick the cheapest one to tower up, though, because we are going to have to get pretty high up to build this thing. Well, it's probably going to be enough of that. Actually, we're going to need a good amount of stone to build the bottom of it because I'm, I don't want it to be just a flat island that's so boring. I want to build like an entire actual floating island. This is probably going to take a lot of stones. So I'm spending a ton of money on a bunch of stone. But now it's time to build this thing. <laughs> All right, guys, the sky island is pretty much done just for now. It's very, very basic. It's very tiny, but I do plan on expanding it pretty, pretty heavily throughout the series. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at it. It's a little bit underwhelming, honestly. It's, it's really nothing too special, but it's certainly a start. So let's go ahead and grab all of our items down here. So now if you do slash home, you'll see that we are up on our sky island, our nice little humble abode. And like I said, I'm going to be expanding this outward in every direction. Uh, building it though is, <laughs> is really painful. It is not fun to have to do all the scaffolding around the outside of the gosh dang thing, but honestly, it's worth it. I think it's so cool up here. And especially if you guys start doing islands around the outside of me as well, it'll be super epic. Maybe we could do bridges to each other's islands, things like that. I don't no, it'd be so sick. Let's go ahead and put all of our items away into this chest, though, to officially make this home. Do I take full damage? Ugh, no, I don't. That is always very scary. I'm on top of the world, baby! Let's go. Oh! Oh my gosh. Wait. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! This is not only a boss Pokemon, but it is a mega boss! Meaning that if we're able to take out this Venusaur, I will not only get a Venusaur right Mega Stone, but I'll also get a Mega Ring. Meaning that will allow me to actually Mega Evolve. But the problem is this thing is level 86. Oh, that did a lot of damage and that did very little damage. Oh boy! Okay, this is uh, seemingly going to be pretty impossible. Okay, my strategy, we're gonna Dragon Breath. We need to paralyze it. Please paralyze it. No. Finding these things is so incredibly rare. I know it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to take this thing out, but I have to give it as many chances as I possibly can. And there we go. We got it paralyzed, which was my game plan. I'm going to... The reason I'm air slashing is because there's a chance that I flinched the Venusaur. And since it's paralyzed, there's a chance that it'll be paralyzed as well. Come on. Oh, wait. It's confused, though. It's confused. There's a chance that it hurts itself in confusion. Come on. Please, 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 please. No! We were so close! It could have hit itself in confusion. It could have gotten paralyzed. But no, of course, it still hits through. But that's okay, because we just paralyzed it again. Yes, we flinched it. Okay, flinch again. Flinch again. Double flinch. No, 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 no. We don't like that. One more air slash. Don't move. Par yes, it flinched! It flinched! It flinched! Yes, let's go, baby! 
here. And there we go. We got a rare candy. There is the Venusaur right that we wanted. A strange souvenir. I don't know what that is. And 500 buckaroonies. And that's not all. We also get to equip a mega ring. But I'm going to put the mega chain on. Get some bling going. Let's go. That is definitely the coolest part and best part of today's episode so far. So now if I get a Venusaur, I can actually mega evolve it. But to mega evolve any other Pokemon that can mega evolve, I do have to collect its mega stone. And the only way to do that is to take out its mega form in the wild. So that still is going to be really rare to find any others. But finding that Venusaur is pretty epic. This is a Mega Stone that I got in last episode, and today I want to put it to use. This Mega Stone in particular is a Venusaur Mega Stone called a Venusaurite. And the way I can use it is if I get myself a Venusaur of my own. So that is going to be one of the goals for today. While I was up on my Sky Island as well, there were some Pokemon spawning, and one in particular was the Shuppet, but its name looks a little bit different than all the others. And I didn't know why until I figured out that Shuppet is part of the hunts so here on the server we have a couple of pokemon that you can hunt and if you find one and catch it you get really good rewards however the pokemon does have to have the specific characteristics that is listed under the hunt so for this one in particular this shuppet has to be a female that is either enormous or giant growth now to me that doesn't look like a giant enormous shuppet but we're gonna go ahead and try to catch it anyway just to see if potentially it is so now that we got into the red let's go ahead and throw an ultra ball at it and this should do the trick and boom there we go we caught the Shuppet, but it doesn't look like we actually got any of the rewards. And that is because the growth is pygmy, as you can see here. Oh, and it's also a male. But if that Shuppet was a female and fell into the category of enormous or giant growths, I would have gotten one of those possible rewards underneath. An Arceus plate would have been sick. One thing that is pretty cool about having a Sky Island as well is a lot of Pokemon do spawn up here. And since I am pretty far away from the ground, very few Pokemon are spawning down there. So the more that I expand this island, the more Pokemon that are going to be spawning on it. I also want to do a lot of work to my house and island in today's episode. I want to get like an actual structure built on this island, along with I want to dig underneath here, like into the ground to make it seem like this island sort of came up from the ground here. But now it's time to go hunt for a Bulbasaur because eventually we can get that into a Venusaur, which will be able to mega evolve. And that would be so epic. Also, Charizard does have two mega evolutions. There is a Charizard X and a Mega Charizard. Charizard Y. So if I could find one of those today and get one of those Charizardites, that would also be really cool and honestly probably cooler than a Mega Venusaur. I'm pretty sure Bulbasaur does spawn in a forest though, so I'm going to be spending a lot of time running around here to see if I can find one. Starter Pokemon are very rare to find because of how strong they are and Bulbasaur is certainly no exception to that rule. So I'm probably going to be here for a little while. Hopefully I find something else cool while I'm out here though. I've also been told that a Birch Forest might be the best place to look for one. So thank goodness I actually just found one. My house is right over there. So this is a good spot if I ever want to find any more Bulbasaurs. I'm actually probably going to have to end up breeding these guys if I want to get a really good Bulbasaur. Because like I said in the first episode, I do plan on competing on the server, competing in tournaments, competing in Warzone. And if I want to do that, I'm going to have to get not only really good Pokemon, but also EV and IV train them to make sure that they're the strongest that they can possibly be. And the best way to do that is to breed them. It is a long and tedious process, but it's most certainly worth it. But in order to do that, I do have to first catch myself a Bulbasaur. Well, actually two Bulbasaurs, because I need a male and a female for them to breed. I'm pretty sure Eevee also spawns in the birch forest biome, so hopefully we can find one of those as well. I definitely would not mind to have a really good Sylveon on the team or an Umbreon. Those are probably, in my opinion, the two best competitive Eevees. So let's keep an eye out for any other interesting Pokemon that we can find out here. Deerling, you're just going to be a little bit of fodder for my boy Zardius. Ooh, my acrobatics level just got up to level five and I got $500 for it. Let's go. I soon realized that Bulbasaur doesn't even spawn at nighttime, so I decided to head to the boss tower to grind some levels and items. When it became daytime again, I stored all the items I got from the boss tower back into my chest. Then I went back to the birch forest to hunt for Bulbasaur again. Ooh, a Pikachu. Okay. Yeah. 
let's let's catch this thing. I don't really have any Pokemon that can injure it yet, so we're just gonna have to chuck some Great Balls at this thing until we catch it, which really shouldn't be too hard. Honestly, I should invest in Quick Balls because Quick Balls are the best Pokeball in the game to catch Pokemon without hurting them or anything. So I probably should get some of those, or I should get a Pokemon that knows False Swipe. Like maybe I should go get a Scyther, level that up, because that just makes catching other Pokemon very, very easy, especially if I do come across a legendary Pokemon. And there we go. We caught the Pikachu. Maybe not the greatest Pokemon of all time, but definitely a fun one to use. How cool would it be if Raichu could Mega Evolve? That should definitely be a thing. Does it get like a signature Gigantamax form though? Uh, that I'm not sure of. I don't think that it does, which I'm surprised about because Pikachu and Raichu, they're like the, the signature Pokemon of the entire game. You would think that Pokemon would invest more into making it actually like a good competitive Pokemon. Bulbasaur, show yourself. One thing that is cool about playing on the server as well is I actually could just buy a Bulbasaur from somebody else. I'm sure that someone would be willing to sell a Bulbasaur for the amount of money that I have, which is 4,000. But I also kind of feel like I just want to catch it on my own. It would make me feel a lot more attached to my own Bulbasaur than if I bought it from somebody. Oh, yes, sir. There we go, baby. Finally, we found ourselves a Bulbasaur. Let's use the Pikachu to actually damage it. Oh, we know Nuzzle. That's perfect. That is going to paralyze the Bulbasaur. Now we can use Slam to weaken it more. Yes, there we go. And now it should be relatively easy to catch this thing. Let's go. Boom. There we go. Bulbasaur is mine. And finally, we're starting to get like a decent team going. Okay. And its IVs are 51% and has literally zero IVs in speed, which is horrible. <laughs> That's literally like the opposite of what you want. So we're certainly going to have to do a lot of breeding with Bulbasaurs if we're ever going to want to get a perfect one. Before we do train it up into a Venusaur though, I do want to work on the house a little bit more. So I'm going to start by digging the trench underneath the island to make it seem like the island was actually ripped out of the ground. I soon realized that the tools that I had were not sufficient enough to get the job done very quickly. So I asked in chat if anyone had any tools for sale and I ended up getting myself a diamond shovel and a moonstone pickaxe. But I was also told that there's a slash shop GUI that allows you to buy any tools that you want. And these tools were very expensive, but I did decide to buy a thunderstone shovel and it was definitely worth the $2,000 because it tore up dirt. This made the excavating 10 times quicker and I was able to complete the hole in just about 20 minutes. All right, and here is the hole. <laughs> uh, honestly, guys, it, it didn't really turn out exactly how I was expecting it to. I thought for some whatever reason in my head, this sounded like a much better and cooler idea than how it looks, but it's supposed to look like the island got ripped out of the ground and it was up there. I decided to put some cobblestone around the outside as well to make it look like rubble. Like rubble fell off as it like exploded out of the ground, but I'm not a very good builder, so... I don't think I did that very much justice. But even though I'm not a very good builder, I do enjoy building. So I'm definitely going to be continuing to work on this project as time goes. If you guys have any suggestions on how I can make this build better, what I can do differently, certainly let me know. Because right now, I'm honestly not... <laughs> I'm not too happy with it. It is a little bit lame, I'm going to be honest. Um, also, if you guys do hop on the server and do slash warp siren, it takes you right here. I hope that I never actually build in this spot. Because if I do, you guys are going to suffocate and die. So <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen. But anyway, it is time to train up our Bulbasaur into a Venusaur. And I'm pretty sure the best way to do that is to take all of these Pokemon out of my party, bring out my XP all that I got from the boss tower earlier, and just start slaughtering things again in the boss tower with Zardius. That should give Bulbasaur a ton of XP. And there we go. It is doing just that. Oh, I actually forgot, but I do have a bunch of XP candies that I could give him as well, but this is probably a much faster way to do it. And there we go. It was already evolving into Ivysaur. Once we start making like all this progress on the server and getting these higher level Pokemon. It's very convenient because you can level up your other Pokemon so much faster. And there we go. Ivysaur is now evolving into Venusaur. And honestly, it was a pretty fun process. The boss tower is one of my favorite places to be. Not only do you get a ton of levels, but you get some really amazing items as well. For example, all these items that I got here was just from leveling up my Bulbasaur into Venusaur at the boss tower. Guys, I have something to confess. I didn't tell you yet because I feel like a lot of people would get triggered about it, but I have Slash Fly. It does come with one of the higher ranks on the server, so you can actually get Fly on the server, but because I'm the owner of the server, I figured I would just give myself the highest rank, but I'm not actually redeeming any of the other rewards other than Slash Fly. It just makes things so much easier for me, and it also helped a lot with, with building my 
house slash castle thing that is not done. Uh, I, I ran out of blocks for the roof. As you can see, I have $6 left. Six, a total of $6. Apparently buying blocks, uh, it adds up and it gets pretty expensive. So this is what it's looking like right now. Honestly, I kind of like it, but I feel like I need to expand the roof outward one and break it all and redo the whole thing. But I feel like, I don't know, it's it's a decent start, I guess. I don't I don't even really know why I went castle themed, but this is, this is what we're rocking with so far. If you guys have any suggestions of what I can do to improve the house slash castle slash whatever this is, definitely let me know. But now that the house is somewhat a little bit finished, it is time to finally put the Venusaur right on our Venusaur and see how awesome he actually is. So let's drop down. Ooh, the crater. I forgot about the crater. It looks so cool. And let's see this thing in action. Level 36 Glammeow. That is not Venusaur. All right, Linoon, you're about to get the work. Let's see this boy in action. We went ahead and clicked our Mega Evolve button and let's hit him with a big old seed bomb. Come on, baby. He just turned invisible. Why? I don't know why it didn't do the animation. Let's try that one again. Uh, oh, there we go. Boom, Mega Venusaur. Check this thing out. He looks absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, look at him. Yeah. Oh, one seed bomb doesn't actually kill him, but it does do a good amount of damage. And the second seed bomb, see you later. Easy peasy. Let's go. So I'm pretty sure I can actually mega evolve him out of battle. No. I thought that there was a way to mega evolve him outside of battle, but apparently not. I also didn't know that I could ride this thing. Yo, dude, let's go. Oonch, 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 oonch. Okay, level 30 Raticate. This is actually going to be potentially a challenge for Mega Venusaur. I don't know. Let's see what he can do. Dude, he looks so sick. Mega Venusaur is actually one of my favorite megas to use because it just becomes so tanky. It's a very, very essential type of Pokemon to have on a team because of how tanky it is, and it also is good for for utility because it can poison enemies. It can put them to sleep. It can leech seed them. So it's really, really good to just slow down battles. Now, this is likely not going to be the Venusaur that I actually end up using because like I said earlier, I'm going to have to breed it. But the fact that we are able to mega evolve a Pokemon in just episode two is pretty epic. This is a pseudo legendary Pokemon called Dratini that eventually evolves into the all powerful Dragonite. I found it in a deep ocean biome and now it's time to catch it. We have it in the red and paralyzed, so hopefully this Ultra Ball does the trick. And there we go, we caught it. In this episode of Pixelmon, my objective is gonna be to catch every single pseudo legendary Pokemon. And I suppose starting with Dratini. I just RTP'd a couple times to find an extreme hills biome and it seems like we had just done that. The reason that I wanted to find in Extreme Hills is because there's tons of pseudo-legendaries that spawn here. I'm pretty sure Tyranitar, Komoo, and Hydreigon all spawn in the Extreme Hills, so it makes most sense to come here. Oh! Hey, is that a Jagmoo? Is that another one? Jag- Wait, Komoo is- Why are they everywhere? I don't know, but I will take it. I was fully expecting this challenge to take a very, very long time, but at this rate, it shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. But anyway, the main reason that I want to catch these pseudo-legendary Pokemon it's because in this series, I want to make sure that I have a very strong team. And obviously, pseudo-legendary Pokemon are all extremely strong. Last episode, we did manage to get a Mega Venusaur, which is certainly very, very cool. Unfortunately, he's a little bit too strong to attack this Jagmoo again, though. So we're going to have to continue to chuck these Ultra Balls at it until hopefully we catch it. We are running dangerously low on Ultra Balls, though. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get some more very soon. I'm not going to lie, though. I do feel like Komoo is maybe the worst of all of the pseudo legendaries. And there we go. Now we did just catch it, which is super nice. So we can check him off the list. I want you guys to comment down below your favorite pseudo legendary Pokemon as well. Mine is probably Metagross, I think. I just think he looks super cool and he's also incredibly strong. Oh, wait, I forgot about Garchomp too. Garchomp is certainly up there. I'm gonna have them as a tie in first place. Metagross and Garchomp are my two favorite pseudo legendaries. But let's see if we can find any more. I know that Larvitar spawns around here too. Oh, yeah. There, oh my god! There's one right there! I'm not making this up. This is, wait, this is actually becoming way easier than I thought it was going to be. And there we go. There is Larvitar captured. Honestly, guys, I was expecting this video to take at least three, four hours to record, but so far, things have gone very swimmingly. However, I know for a fact that some of the other pseudos are much harder to find and capture, such as a Shalgon or Bagon to get Salamence, and also a Beldum or Matang to get the Metagross. 
Kratos. I also am going to level all of these guys up to their final evolutions in today's episode as well, because I don't want to leave them in their pre-evolution wimpy dimpy forms. I want to get them in their final evolution ultra strong forms. That is, after all, the purpose of this entire episode. Before we do continue the hunt, though, I do want to show you guys my house progress. I did do a little bit more decorating in between episodes, so this is what the house looks like now. Honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty wonky, and it's starting to look a little bit spooky. It kind of looks like a scary mansion. I also put four pillars up because that is everything that I have claimed. So you guys are not going to be able to build inside of my claim, but I do plan on expanding outward and filling up this entire claim. So anywhere outside of those four pillars is where you guys can build. Also, if you guys ever want to write me any letters or give me any gifts, here's my mailbox. You can just fly up to my house, drop something into this hopper, and it'll go right into this chest. And if you're wondering why no one has built around me quite yet, I've actually been recording all of these videos before I've posted any. So I'm assuming after I post episode one, you guys are going to be all around here in your sky islands, and it's going to be pretty epic. I cannot wait for that. I do have a ginormous open archway. I do have to be really careful, though, because one misstep and, uh, well, I might just be a goner. But yeah, I feel like the house came out all right so far. Definitely a lot more expansion than I'm going to have to do, but building these islands is so annoying. It is certainly much easier with fly, though, so I'll make it happen at some point. Anyway, let's go back to trying to find some more of these pseudo legendaries. Here's a desert biome, which is really good for finding Gibble, which will eventually evolve into a Garchomp. Uh, honestly, I think that they're relatively common. I think about it now, like going into this video, I thought it'd be really hard to find all these guys, but I'm pretty sure Gibble should spawn relatively easily. Ooh, Hippopotas. Not quite what we're looking for, but a very cute Pokemon. Honestly, one of these episodes, I should just go around and catch like everything that I see and try to complete my Pokedex. That is obviously going to be a lot of work and probably a lot more than just one episode, but completing the Pokedex certainly could be a challenge for this series. At least generation one. I think we can do generation one, but I'm not sure if I should save all the generation for just one episode or if I should like slowly but surely capture generation one Pokemon. Also, finding a Gibble is proving to be a little bit more more difficult than I originally imagined it would be. Oh, a desert temple. Has it been explored? Yes, it has. That is one big drawback about playing on a server is that almost every single structure has been looted and pillaged and it's really, really tough to get a lot of natural loot that way. Oh, a village. This is actually, oh, what? Oh my gosh. I just found a shiny trap inch. Are are you serious? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, I actually can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I, I can't remember the last time I've ever found a full odds shiny. Literally, I, I don't know if I've, I'm pretty sure this is going to give me a lot of levels for my catching skill as well. Yeah, look, I just got like six levels from catching for that. Oh my gosh. Yo, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what shiny fly guy looks like. Oh my gosh. That is not at all what this video was supposed to be about, but now I kind of feel like that is like 10 times cooler than getting any pseudo legendary. And plus, I know Flygon isn't as good as the pseudo legendaries, but he's still pretty dang good. Kind of borderline pseudo legendary, but not quite at that level. And here's a Fennekin as well. We're getting some really awesome Pokemon right now. I can't believe it. I, I, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. When I saw it at first, I didn't even think it was a shiny. Like, I saw it was a different texture, but I just thought it was like some weird custom texture that spawned. I, <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. That's actually crazy. Also, if you guys like the idea of me having to go out and catch every single pseudo legendary, I'm thinking about doing it for starter Pokemon as well. We did just catch a Fennekin, so that kind of ruins the video a little bit, but that's okay. We can do it for the rest of them. Dude, I, 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 I don't even know. I'm at a loss for words, and I'm someone who can talk about anything for as long as humanly possible, normally. But right now, oh, a little Dormaku. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Dormaku has one of the best walking animations of all time. He just hops around. He is adorable. This makes me just want to go shiny hunting now, to be honest. I don't know why, but I really want to find a bunch of shiny Pokemon. I'm not sure there's really much of a strategy to shiny hunt in Pixelmon, though, so I don't really know what to do. I think that there is the thing. I, I, I don't know what it's called. It's like, uh, it's called stacking or something, but if you KO the same Pokemon over and over, it does have... A oh my 
Dude, <laughs> why are you pink? Are you trolling me? I thought I found another shiny. <laughs> Dude, I almost just got bamboozled. I don't know the last time I found a Poliwhirl in Pixamon. I keep getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure there is a way to technically shiny hunt, and that is to eliminate the same Pokemon over and over. So, for example, if I want to find a shiny Surskit, if I just kept on eliminating Surskit over and over and over, I'm pretty sure it boosts the odds of the consecutive Surskit that spawns to be shiny. Shiny. And also, I just had a theory that the reason Gibble isn't spawning is because it might only spawn at like nighttime or something. But luckily, the sun is going down. So I think that should hopefully be the case. And we should be seeing some Gibble spawns kick in very shortly. And here's why are these Diglets pink? What is <laughs> why? Am I missing something? Is that like a normal thing? Are, are Diglets pink now? I feel like I'm seeing more pink ones than I am brown ones. What is going on? I'm pretty sure Shiny Diglet, by the way, only has a red nose and like, or a blue nose. And that's the only only difference. So when I saw the pink one, I didn't think it was a shiny, but I was just confused about it. I probably should have caught one of them though, just because I don't know how rare they are. But then again, I did just find two of them kind of back to back. All right, Mr. Gibble, it is your time to shine. Come out, come out, wherever you... Oh, another village. Oh, oh, I was meaning to say this earlier when we got to the other village, but then we found the shiny trap pinch and then I totally forgot about it. But villages are actually pretty important in Pixelmon because some of the villagers actually give you quests to do, and that is how you get some really rare items. And I know one of the quests is something that gives you the ability to Dynamax and Gigantamax. I know it's pretty rare to find the person that gives that quest, but it is a possibility. So that's just something to keep note of if you guys ever do run into a village here is to check out some of the villagers and see if they have an exclamation point on their head. I think that if it's a red exclamation point, then it's a very rare one. Anyway, where are my gibbles? What is going on? Hello, Mr. This is how long I was expecting it to take for every single pseudo-legendary. So I'm honestly not surprised that it's taking this long. But at the same time, I did think Gibble was one of the easier ones to catch. Why does that Diglett have hair? Oh, is it Alolan Diglett? Is that why? It must be an Alolan Diglett, right? Diglett is such a strange Pokemon to me. I don't even know what it is. Does it have a full body underneath the ground? And that's just his head poking out? I don't think anyone will ever know. Oh, and there we go. Finally, a Gibble spawned. Ugh. That was pretty annoying, Mr. Gibble. And this Pikachu, by the way, I wasn't really expecting to use him too much when I caught him. It was kind of just like, I caught the Pikachu because... But he's actually been proving to be incredibly useful because he knows Nuzzle, which is 100% paralyzed, and he has the ability Static. So he can paralyze things that are ground type as well if they attack me physically, just like so. Which is very useful when catching Pokemon because it makes them capture a lot easier. And look, there's another pink Diglett. What is that? It's, it's back there. Can you guys see it? It's, oh, oh, it's back there. Why? What is going on? Now I'm always going to be on the lookout for more shiny Pokemon. Like, I'm just so into this. I don't know why I'm so into this shiny Pokemon thing now. And there we go. Though. There is the Gibble captured. So now we have Tratini, Larvitar, Jangmo, and Gibble, and a shiny trap in. That was not part of the plan, but it, it sure is a thing. Okay, I want to go back to the Extreme Hills biome because I believe that is where we can find a Hydreigon and also also a Larvitar. They should both spawn there. Okay, here we go. Here's one right here. Perfect. And I'm assuming nighttime is probably the right time for both of those Pokemon since they are both dark types. Let's see if we can get them to spawn. Speaking of shinies and shiny hunting in general, by the way, I have thought about shiny hunting before, but again, I don't think that there's any like real proper way to do it on the server. So if you guys have any ideas of how we can implement shiny hunting onto the server a little bit better, let me know and maybe I can make some sort of plugin to make it a real thing. Because I know a lot of people love shiny hunting. I never really used to be a big shiny hunter, but catching that shiny trap inch kind of makes me want to do it more. And unfortunately, it is daytime now, and I just looked it up, and DNO and Larvitar both spawn at night. So it is kind of useless to be here now. But where it is not useless to be is a Mesa biome. So we're going to RTP until we find a Mesa. All right, and there we go. We found a Mesa biome. I'm pretty sure the only pseudo that spawns here during the day is going to be a Beldum, which evolves into a Metagross eventually, which is like my favorite pseudo-legendary Pokemon along with the Garchomp. Bagon will also spawn here, which evolves into Salamence, but only at night. So let's see if we can find ourselves a Beldum, Matang, or Met- What is that? Why are these Pokemon pink? 
I don't understand. When did Pokemon just start becoming pink? It's not the shiny because if it was shiny, its name would be yellow. Whoa, in chat, someone just won a fusion shard. That is actually really, really good. And it's actually something that I've been meaning to bring up to you guys to get your opinions on this as well. Because in this series, I definitely want to do a lot of fusing of Pokemon. So for example, I can fuse my Charizard with some Pokemon. I can fuse my Dragonite when I eventually get that with a Mewtwo. I'll be able to fuse my Garchomp with a Groudon. There's tons of fusions on the server, but the problem is getting a fusion key is extremely difficult and there's really not many great ways to get it on the server. So I'm wondering if you guys think I should just give myself the fusion keys and if I have two Pokemon that can fuse, then I should just do the fusion or if I should do it legit and try to get the fusion keys how I'm supposed to. I feel like if I was the viewer, I would probably want me to get them legit and get them how I'm supposed to, but that means that realistically, I would probably only fuse like one, maybe, maybe, maybe two Pokemon in this entire series. Because one good way to get fusion keys is to purchase crate keys, which I'm not going to be doing in this series because ironically, I want to keep it relatively legit and I don't want to be just like buying keys to get myself good Pokemon. So I don't really know. I'm not sure what the best approach here is. Like if I should just give myself the fusion keys or not. It's not really giving myself fusion Pokemon because I still have to go get those Pokemon to fuse them. It's more of just like, I don't know. I feel like it just keeps the, the series more entertaining if I have the ability to fuse any two Pokemon immediately. I don't know. It's up to you guys. I'll read the comments and see what everyone's thinking because I definitely understand both sides of the argument. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think about that. Oh, oh my gosh. I literally don't... Smags, don't cut that out. Keep in that awkward break of me scratching my leg because that is literally right when this Matang spawns. Dude, this is actually crazy. Finding this thing... I... I promise these things are supposed to be like ultra rare to find. I mean, I have been recording for a little while, so it's not like I'm finding these instantly, instantly, but I'm definitely finding these a lot quicker than I thought I was going to. But this is a Matang, which will evolve into a Metagross. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch this thing because the catch rate of Matang is like, I know there's some weird statistic that's like the Matang line specifically is, oh wait, oh my God, we caught it first try. It wasn't even in the red or paralyzer anything. Okay. Well, I was going to say that catching a Matang or Metagross or Beldum has harder catch rates than legendary Pokemon. I'm pretty sure that's true. And we just caught it. Today is a crazy day. Holy... The Pixelmon gods are most certainly watching me right now and just... Just blessing me with everything. Thank you. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a legendary just spawns right on my face. And I'm going back home to grab some more Pokeballs. I do have a Master Ball. I don't plan on using that. But like I did say, if a legendary does want to spawn on me, I may as well have my Master Ball handy just in case. I really need to start crafting Pokeballs because I like don't... Oh, okay. Here's a couple Quick Balls and Dust Balls. I'll take that. Thank you very much. But I am running very low on good Pokeballs, at least. I, I have 59 right ones, but only five ultras left. But anyway, this is great. The sun is starting to go down, which is really good for the Pokemon that we are now hunting because all of the rest of the pseudo legendaries only spawn at nighttime. And I'm in a swamp island right now because this is where Gumi spawns. I don't think I'll be able to do this, but if this night is like ultra good to me and I'm super successful this night, then hopefully I'll be able to catch the remaining, I believe, four pseudo legendaries. There's Gumi, which evolves into Gudra. There's Dino, which evolves into Hydreigon. There's Larvitar, which evolves into Tyranitar. And there's Bagon, which evolves into Salamence, which does spawn right there in the Mesa as well. So I could go back there if this Gumi hunt doesn't go so well. I honestly don't know who I think the worst pseudo legendary is. Gudra is somewhat viable if you put an assault vest on it and just use it as a special defense tank. But I definitely would put him lower on the spectrum of like really solid pseudo legendaries. I guess I'd put Como down there too, but I don't know. I mean, all the pseudos are really good, so it's hard to say that like any individual pseudo legendary is bad. But if I were to make a list, I'd probably put him lower on it. Oh, a toxic orb. That is actually a pretty good item for an HA Gly score. Let's go. Oh yeah, baby. And there is one right there. I'm feeling ultra lucky. Let me get a quick ball. Yay. Come on. Do it to me. 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 Come on. Come on. No. That was kind of embarrassing. I'm going to be honest. Come on. Let's try another one. Come on, quick ball. Do not fail me. No. 
Okay. This is proving to be a little bit more difficult than I imagined. That is okay, though. Get him, Venusaur! Okay, we have him in the red. Now we're gonna put him to sleep. Yes. And now, Dusk Ball, because it's nighttime! If you guys didn't know, Dusk Balls are very good at night. I think that they're actually better than Ultra Balls, and there we go! We caught him! Boom! Gumi off the list. Now let's go to... Let's go to the Mesa Warp that we made and try to find a bag on, because after we catch this bag on, all we'll have to do is get the Larvitar and the Dino, which both spawn in the same biome. Oh, wait, Larvitar! I didn't know Larvitar spawned here! Let's go! Okay, that's actually so good! Quick ball, go! Where's the other one? Quick ball, go! Okay, surely one of those is gonna catch. Quick ball, go! Oh, someone just called a Zygarde. Holy guacamole. Quick ball, go! I feel like I'm wasting my quick... Oh, no, there we go! I got one! I got the one over here? Yeah! Let's go! Larvitar! Boom, baby! Well, I'm gonna try to catch this one as well, because we might want to breed them. But I guess we'll see. Male slash IVs, six. 63%? Not bad. Are you... It is female. Okay, we're actually... I do want to catch this one, too, because eventually I am going to want to breed probably all of these Pokemon to get their IVs to the highest IVs that they can get. And then they'll be very, very good. Like, they're already really good, but if I can breed them, then they will be extremely good. While I catch this thing, though, I may as well look in the background for a Bagon to spawn, because this is also where Bagon spawns, which is the actually the reason why I came to the Mesa at all. Hello? Any Bagons want to spawn, too? And there we go! Oh, we caught! I told you, dude! Dust balls at night are goaded! Okay, so that's Larvitar down. Now we need to get ourselves a Bagon here. Wait, I actually do want to check the IVs on that thing, too. Wait! Oh, wait! I have, I have three Larvitars! When did I... Oh, wait, what?! When did I get three? Am I tripping? 51. Wait, am I being stupid? Did I catch a Larvitar earlier? I don't know what is going on right now. Okay, so let's see. We have you, we have you, we have you, we have you, we have you. We need Bagon and Dino. Why do I have three Larvitars? When did I get the third one? Am I being silly? Oh, wait, I get herbalism levels for breaking these. You will all die! Die! Give me the levels! Give me all the levels! There's another Larvitar there. Give me herbalism levels. I'm pretty sure once I get level five i'll get five hundred dollars too so and definitely worth it i don't know what these are even called these dead shrub things you will all die there we go boom i'm i just got level five druid and i earned five hundred dollars for that and also i have some unfortunate news it seems like the sun is rising so another day another no bag on i'm actually not too upset about the sun rising because i do want to do some training for my pokemon here and i think the best way to do that is to go to the boss tower because not only is the boss tower extremely oh what is this can i take it out what is that oh this is an epic boss which is gonna be pretty challenging to take out but maybe maybe venusaur has it in him if we mega evolve and petal blizzard do we i don't know if we one shot it i think this is 4x effective anyway sorry i got sidetracked the boss tower gives you a ton of awesome items and money and a whole bunch of goodies and it also gives you a bunch of levels as well unfortunately it does spawn an extremely strong pokemon like this rhyperior right there which uh absolutely destroys me. But I think that's okay because Zardius should be able to hopefully destroy some of these guys like this Levany. Boom! That is an epic Levany down, meaning we got $500 from that, some XP candies, an ice stone. We take those, baby. But anyway, I'm gonna sit in here for a little bit. I've, I've been in here in every single episode, so I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with the grinding of this. Honestly, I find it a ton of fun, so I don't mind it at all. I did forget to grab my XP all though, so that's probably something I'm gonna want if, uh, if I'm gonna want these guys to get levels themselves. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Oh, and there we go. Gibble is evolving. This is actually so good for levels. I literally think I've leveled up my team in total of like 30 levels already. It's ridiculous. Look, all of our guys are over level 20 already. And there we go. Jang Momo is evolving as well. I already got a full inventory of dropped items from these boss Pokemon. So this is the start of my second full inventory, but I just got this, which is a lucky egg, and it's the first time I've gotten one yet. A lucky egg pretty much just gives whatever Pokemon Pokemon, you put it on extra experience. So that is actually really good. I'm going to put it on my Dratini for now. So he should be getting more XP. I forgot my stinking XP all again. I put it away when I was dumping all my stuff out. Okay. Oh, Dratini's evolving. There we go. I probably have like two minutes left before I should go back and start searching for the last two pseudo legendaries. All right, there we go. And it is nighttime again, which means the hunt continues. But now check out our team and its levels. The Goomy's all the way up to level 45. Why has it not evolved into Sligo yet? How does that thing evolve? I'm very confused. Oh, it says it's supposed to evolve at level 40. I don't know why it's not evolving. I'm 
honestly, I don't really know. It's actually better for it to not evolve right now, honestly, because the pre-evolution Pokemon don't require as much experience to level up. So if I wait until, I believe level 50 is when it evolves into Gudra. Yeah, level 50. That's probably smarter to evolve it into Sligo at 49 and then Gudra into 50. That should expedite the entire process if I do it that way. But now we are looking for a bag on. Larvitars seem to be the easiest Pokemon to find. I found so many of them, but still no bag on. Or Shelgon or Salamence. I guess finding a Salamence would probably be the best, although it would be quite challenging to actually catch that thing. But that being said, I probably should keep one eye in the sky and one on the ground in case one does go flying over my head. I want to say the best tactic to finding Pokemon is to be in F5 and then just like trying to see the most ground possible. And oh! Wait, he's got like the things around his name, which means that he is a Pokemon to be hunted. If this bag on is a female, that means that I get like an extra reward. See all those possible rewards? There's blue shard, red shard, choice items, Eviolite. There's actually some pretty good stuff there. Please, please be a female. I'm going to get nervous if it's a girl. No, it's a guy. Gosh, dang it. Of course. Guys, I have some tragic news. While I was boss hunting, I may have put all of my Pokeballs back in my stinking house. I put it all back in my house. This is so frustrating. Bagon, you better not despawn. I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> Pokeball, 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 Pokeball. Uh, uh, uh. Please be here. Please be here. No! Are you serious? Oh my god. That is... Mm, that is so frustrating. I just spent so long looking for that thing. Just to realize that I have no Pokeballs? Oh, I'm so dumb. I am so dumb. Sometimes, guys, you just have brain lapses. I just happen to have them more than most people. And uh, that right there was, uh, was one heck of a brain lapse. Okay, here we go. Here's another bag on. Actually, this might be for the best. Maybe this will be a female. It is! Okay! Okay, so if we can catch this thing, that means... Please don't kill it. Yes, perfect. But that would mean that I get some sort of reward. It might not be the best reward of all time, but we should get something. And there's a master ball loot down there, all the way down there as well. So I want to go claim that after this battle too. And there we go. Bagon has been captured, leaving just one more pseudo legendary on the books, which is DNO, which will evolve... Oh, a choice scarf! Yo, that is so good! Oh my gosh. I know a lot of people who watch my videos already know what a choice scarf is, but I feel like I should explain a lot of basic Pokemon things to you guys just in case you don't know. For the viewers who may not be super educated on Pokemon or competitive Pokemon, but what a choice scarf does is if you put it on a Pokemon, let's say I put it on my Charizard, for example, when I'm in a battle, whatever the first move that I use with him, it will lock into that move and that's the only move that I can use until I switch out. Now, that might sound really silly and stupid, but while the choice scarf is on him, his speed gets increased by 50%. So you'll see right here, his speed right now is at 215. With the choice scarf, it's going to go up by 107 points, making it 322 speed with the choice scarf on. There is also a choice band and a choice specs. The choice band does the same thing, but for your attack. So it increases your attack by 50% and locks you into one move. And the choice specs increases your special attack by 50% and locks you into one move as well. So that is actually a really epic item and super good for battling. Oh, and here's a raid den. It's daytime, so I may as well just do some other stuff while I wait for it to be nighttime again. But there's a Skroopy raid den. I guess I'll take this. It's only a one-star raid, but I haven't done a... Why? I got two Magikarps as teammates! Dude! When you go into raids alone, you get matched up with random other Pokemon to help you fight, and I just got matched up with two Magikarps. That is a joke. Um, what's even more of a joke is the rewards that I got here. Okay, that, that was super lame. That was just a one-star raid, though. Some raids go up to five stars, which are actually really, really difficult to take out, but they give some insanely strong rewards. Anyway, let's go back to our home, dump off all of these items, and get back to boss tower grinding to get some more awesome items and also to level up our Pokemon some more. Oh, and there we go! Matang is evolving into Metagross. I thought it was going to take longer to get this Metagross, but there we go. That is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. Let's go! 
go, baby. What's up, boy? Meta Gross in the house. Let's go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first pseudo legendary of the entire series. Well, our first fully evolved one, at least. And there we go. Hakamoo is going to evolve into Komoo, giving us our second fully evolved pseudo legendary of the episode. Let's go. Things are really starting to get rolling now. And it's learning clanging scales, which is a signature move. A beautiful, beautiful stuff. Hello, sir. Welcome. Welcome to the team. Como. -o. Beautiful. So now we can put him away. Gumi is also level 50. I don't know why it's not evolving, but it's supposed to evolve into Gudra by level 50. So that's pretty much done as well. Okay, it is nighttime again, and I just realized that I forgot about Dreepy. Oh, there's definitely going to be a lot of comments about that. I am so sorry. I just remembered, though, because I RTP'd into a Savannah, and that is where Dreepy spawns. So hopefully we can find a Dreepy man and DNO in this singular night. I actually think both of them are relatively common. Well, they're not common, but I don't think that they're as hard to find as the Bagon, so it shouldn't be too, too challenging. Okay, and there we go. That one was pretty quick. We just found a Dreepy. Um, how do I not kill this thing? Crunch shouldn't kill it. How does that happen? Pimpatar is 10 levels lower than it in one shot, and how is that possible? Oh my gosh. Here's another one. Let's try to hurt this one without killing it. We have to be very, very careful, apparently, to not kill this thing. Can we bite it with this? No, we can't bite it with that. Okay, I'm gonna stop biting and crunching this thing because it is getting destroyed right now. Ugh. Finally, we found another one. Okay, we honestly, I don't even think we have much time left in the night. This is getting really, really bad. Um, dude, Dreepy stinks. I mean, it is getting demolished by even my worst moves against it. This is out, out and I'm the same level too. The, the, like, it's actually so bad. I know Dragapult is really good. I guess it does kind of make sense because Dragapult is a glass cannon too, meaning it's very quick. It hits really hard, but it has zero defense. So I guess it makes sense. But at the same time, like still, oh my God. Goodness, it is terrible. And there we go. We caught it. Let's go. Okay, now we have to find an extreme hills and find the DNO, and then we're good to go. Okay, here's the hills. Boom. Oh, I actually I'm pretty sure that it spawns in like Hills Forest, too. So this is literally the exact bottom that we're looking for. Come on, baby. Please, 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 please. I do not want to have to go another night without having all the pseudos that I set out for. Oh, the moon is going down. Please, DNO. Please, 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 please. Please, Diano. Please, Diano. Please, 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 please. Yes! 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 Yes, baby. Dino, Diano, whatever you want to call it. Let's go, baby. Let's get a little nose on the air. Get you a little paralyzed. Okay, bag on. Hit him with a little bit of crunch. A little bit of crunch. Okay, that's not going to do much. Headbutt. Yeah. Oh! But it's perfect. Okay, he's now in the deep red. He's paralyzed. We throw a dust ball at it. Surely we catch him and we do, baby. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Let's go. That is our last pseudo that we were looking for. Now we just have to level all these guys up. And the task for today will have been complete. Why am I wearing goggles? When did I get safety goggles? How has that even happened? Apparently, wearing these reduces heavy fog, which I guess is useful in the ultra space dimension, which we, I guess we can explore at some point. Oh, there's a raid over there. Let's check it out. Oh, it's a Squo vet raid. It's no, it's a, it's a one star raid. I'm not doing that. Well, I guess back to the boss tower we go to level up the rest of these Pokemon. Okay, and Bagon is evolving into Shellgon. And there we go. Dino is evolving. Let's go. And Gabite is finally evolving into Garchomp. Garchomp is so sick. But that means we get to bring Dreepy into the team and start leveling him up now. Oh, and Dragonair is evolving into Dragon. As much as I would love to use him right now, we do still have a task at hand, which is to evolve the rest of these pseudo legendaries. But we are finally on the home stretch. We almost have every single pseudo legendary Pokemon in the game. Okay, Dreepy is now evolving into Dracloak, and I believe that all of my Pokemon are in the second stage of their evolutions, meaning that they just all need one more evolution to get into their final stage. And yes, Shellgun is now evolving into Salamence, baby. Another dragon has entered the team. What's up, baby? Mwah, give me a kiss. And finally, Poopitar is evolving into the almighty pseudo legendary Tyranitar, the rock and dark type. A lot of people's favorites, and it actually does have the ability to mega 
evolve. So hopefully sometime in the series, we can get our hands on a mega Tyranitar. That would be super cool. That being said, we only have two more left. So let's get this done. And there we go. Zwellis is evolving into Hydreigon. Oh, he is so cool. And also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been saving up all of my XP candies and rare candies for later on. So I've just been grinding and saving them all for now. This way in the future, if I ever get like a really, really strong Pokemon or if I'm breeding and I get a perfect IV Pokemon, theoretically, I think I should just be able to put all of the rare candies and XP candies that I'm getting from this grind session onto that level one Pokemon and get it all the way up to level 100 pretty much instantly. I mean, just look at all of these candies. Surely this is enough to get a Pokemon to level 100. I'm pretty sure that $88,000 is enough to buy a lot of legendary Pokemon. And keep in mind, I do still have all of the items that I'm getting from these boss Pokemon. I could go to any Pokemon and sell a lot of the items to get way more money. And also, here we go, baby. Dracloak is evolving into Dragapult. Come on. Yeah. Dragon Darts, don't mind if I do. And there we go. There he is. This is the last pseudo legendary. So now, we can completely fill our team with pseudo legendaries with three left over. Again, the Gumi didn't want to evolve. I'm not sure what's going on there. And we even got the shiny trappage. This legendary orb lets you spawn one of the three legendary birds. And right now it's selling for $45,000, which is over half of the total amount of money that I even have. But I feel like I gotta do it for the content. So let's go ahead and buy the legendary orb. Unfortunately, we're down to just $43,000, but it's okay. We can get it back. Now, right now, the legendary orb is not active. It's kind of just a weird gypsy ball in my hand. To activate it, we either need to get a fire stone, a thunder stone, or an ice stone. Luckily, I have all three of them from all of the boss tower grinding that I've been doing in previous episodes. All you have to do is put the orb in your crafting table and combine it with one of the stones. The ice stone turns it into the orb of frozen souls. The thunder stone turns it into the orb of static souls. And finally, the fire stone turns it into the orb of fiery souls. This should be pretty obvious, but the Ice Stone means that we'll get an Articuno, the Thunderstone means we get a Zapdos, and the Fire Stone means we would get a Moltres. Now, my personal favorite of the three is a Zapdos, so that is what we are going to be targeting. But because we do still have an Ice Stone and a Fire Stone, if we ever do get any more legendary orbs, we can easily turn them into the Orb of Frozen Souls or the Orb of Fiery Soul. All right, and now that we have this legendary Orb of Static Souls, this is where the real challenge begins. You see, we don't get to just spawn in the Zapdos quite yet. We have to fill up this orb with Pokemon Souls, meaning we actually have to go around and eliminate, I believe it's around 350, 375 around there, Pokemon and collect their souls. And so every time I eliminate one of these Pokemon, its souls goes into this orb until it is totally and completely full. So this could take a while. I do have a plan though. My plan is to find a giant jungle biome. And the reason I want to find a jungle biome is because I want to find a Mew. And I know that this task is going to take a very long time. So while I'm collecting all these Pokemon souls, I may as well spend all that time in an area where a Mew spawns. And if I get lucky enough to have one spawn, then that means all I would need to do is get a cloning machine to give me a pretty good chance at catching a Mewtwo, which is one of the strongest Pokemon in the entire game. Now, I think when most people find a jungle biome, what they would normally do is just try to wait around or search for a specific Pokemon that they're looking for, but I'm here to tell you that that is not the correct strategy. You see, in a jungle, there's way too many leaves, way too many trees, and it's just too dense. You can't see where any of the Pokemon are. So, what we're gonna do is grab all of our dirt and build a ginormous platform on top of the jungle. This way, all of the Pokemon will spawn on my platform instead of on the ground. I kind of already accidentally used 
use this tactic with my Sky Island. If you guys noticed in the beginning of the video, there was a ton of Pokemon on that island, and it's really, really small. So I'm hoping that after I make this giant floating dirt island, that a ton of Pokemon are going to spawn up here because that will allow me to eliminate a ton of Pokemon really quickly, and it will also give the best chance for a Mew to spawn up here. I am pretty sure, actually, that the only way Pokemon spawn is on grass blocks, I think. So we are going to have to replace some of this with grass blocks, get the grass to spread around, and hopefully then Pokemon will start spawning. All right, and here we are. Um, this island, honestly, is a lot smaller than I was originally hoping that it would be. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger, but that is okay. It does get the job done, and it is now time to start slaughtering these Pokemon. Last episode, guys, we actually found a shiny trap inch, which is in my team right now. I have the XP all on, and I gave it a lucky egg, so it should be getting a decent amount of levels from all these Pokemon as well. But the reason I bring it up is because now I'm kind of addicted to shiny hunting, and I want to find more shiny Pokemon. So I'm really hoping that we do find one while we're up here, but honestly, I don't know what they all look like. I really, really hope that we don't actually find one and kill it. I do kind of feel like I have a strategy, though, to reset spawns. Like, for example, like, I'm here, right? Let's say I go home, and then I just do slash back. That should theoretically just reset all of the spawns. Okay, there's an Oddish there. There's a Charger Bug there. Okay, and yeah, see, like, all of these new things are spawning after I just TP'd away and TP'd back. So I wonder if that is a good strategy to do. I'm not really sure. Like, maybe... Wait, Axu spawns in the jungle? Since when does that happen? What the heck? I, I, ne I really never knew that. Literally, last episode is when we went on our pseudo-legendary hunt, and I had no idea that it spawned in the jungle. I, I probably could have found him a little bit quicker had I known. But it's all good. It's whatever. Charger Bug, listen, buddy. You fit so well on that block, but your time has come. If you guys do actually take a look at the legendary orb in my hotbar, you'll see that there's a little bit of durability on it. And every time I get an elimination on a Pokemon, that durability will go up and up and up until it is completely full. And when it is, then I'll be able to go to the legendary shrines at spawn, place the orb into the Zapdos shrine and spawn in the Zapdos. Okay, Joltik, seriously? There we go. Okay, there's something I really need to show you guys. This trap inch is level 25, 25, and its speed is nine. I don't think I have ever seen such a high Pokemon with a lower stat in any category, let alone the most important one speed that is absolutely appalling i i literally have never seen that in my life trap inch has to be ashamed of himself i mean that is so embarrassing <gasps> oh oh what is this wait why <laughs> no i have no pokeballs um wait what is this rattata though i've never seen this before is this like an alolan rattata i don't think so right um please tell me there's some pokeballs in the gts there's not okay i just asked if someone could tp to me and give me some pokeballs Yes, this guy is a legend. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't need all of those, though. You can keep those. Yeah, thank you so much, bro. What a legend. Thank you so much, Just RP. Okay, where is this? Look at this Rattata. Look at this Rattata. What is this thing? I have never seen that in my life. I don't know what is going on, but in these first couple of episodes, I am finding Pokemon that I've literally never seen before. And this Rattata is certainly no exception. What is that? And there we go. We caught it. Look, even the sprite is green. What is this? It's a v Valencian Sprite. What is that? Is that rare? That's gotta be like the rarest Rattata in the world. Surely. I've literally never seen that before in my life. I'm also realizing now that I should probably bring my Master Ball with me just in case that Mew does spawn. So let's go home. There's the Master Ball. Beautiful stuff. It's so nice playing Pixelmon like normally because I haven't done a Let's Play in Pixelmon in probably like a year and a half to two years. And I kind of forgot about how much fun it is to actually just play like normal Pixelmon. Because in the past like year or so, most of my content has pretty much just been like mini games and challenges and custom textured Pokemon, custom Pokemon in general, and just custom this, custom that. And it's really nice to just sit back, relax, and play Pixelmon again. Because now, wait, what is this? Just RP's, just RP's corner. Pokeball bringer. <laughs> Nice. But now, whenever I find shinies or legendary or, or custom textures,
texture, it makes it like 10 times cooler. Wait, look at this bell sprout. Wait, that is not a normal bell sprout, right? Am I tripping? Why are there all these custom forms? What is going on? That does not look normal though, but it's not shiny because if it was shiny, the name would be yellow. I guess it's not really a problem, but, but one thing I am kind of noticing about the jungle biome though is there's not really any Pokemon that I love. What is this? Oh, another Valencian palette. What is that? What is that? Is it shiny? No. Is that another Valencian palette? What is this Valencian palette stuff? It keeps making me think I'm finding shinies, but I'm not. If this thing is also a Valencian palette, I'm gonna be really upset. Okay, the Need Arena is also a Valencian palette. That is honestly making me pretty upset. I was really hoping that it was something way cooler, but it seems to be very, very common. So I'm gonna put all of my Valencian palette Pokemon away. I guess I'll put them all in the same box though, just to keep them organized. But I'm assuming that that is what the Diglets were that we found last episode and probably the Rhyhorns as well because they were all pink. I don't know what that is or why it's a thing, but I am now going to be less excited when I find Pokemon that are different textures and not shiny. Oh, hello. There's a trainer that's level 13. Yeah, let's, let's battle. What's up, boy? Why would anyone be a trainer and choose to be a bug type trainer? I don't understand. Like, realistically, if Pokemon were real and you were forced to pick one type of, like, Pokemon that you base your entire personality and Pokemon team around, what nerd, what loser, what dork would ever pick bug type? I feel like that's gotta be the newbiest type of them all. I, I feel like I would probably pick water type. I don't really know why, honestly. I guess, I mean, there's a lot of really cool water Pokemon. I just, I think the water type is very cool. That's, that's really it. But I think I would also really like to do fire and probably dragon too. All right, I just looked it up and Mew only spawns during the day. So there's really no point for me to be here at night. So I'm just going to RTP and explore the wilderness when it is nighttime. I'm just going to go around and pretty much slaughter every single thing that I see. I highly doubt it, but I really hope that we do at some point come across another shiny. A shiny Geodude would be pretty cool. See, look at all these Gibbles, guys. I remember in last episode, I was really struggling to find a Gibble and I kept saying like, dude, I swear that these things are really common. See, they're everywhere now. The second I stop looking for them is when they show themselves. And check this out. Someone in chat just caught a Kartana that spawned in the war zone. Now, I don't think we have strong enough Pokemon yet to go to the war zone, but one day, ladies and gentlemen, one day we will go to the war zone to hopefully find some legendary Pokemon there and also battle some people, beat them, and steal their Pokemon. That is what the war zone is all about. All right, well, nothing interesting happened that entire night, so I pretty much just went out, slaughtered a bunch of Pokemon, and now I think it's time to go back. Oh my gosh! I thought that this was like a naturally spawn Eternatus, but it's stinking just RPs. And check this out, there's a Vigoroth and a Pancham here. That's the first time I've seen them this entire time. Unfortunately for them, it is their doom though, and I will slaughter them both into the orb, you go! These are all very nice donations that these Pokemon are making. And here we go, our trap pinch is evolving! Let's go, baby, into a Vibrava. It's learning Dragon Breath. Wait a minute, hold on a hot second. This shiny is so cool! I did not know Vibrava has such a cool shiny form. Are you serious? Dude, that looks so sick. I honestly forget what Flygon shiny looks like, so that makes me really excited to see what Flygon is going to look like when we get that. I think it evolves at 42? 45, maybe? 52? I'm gonna look it up now. Okay, so it evolves at 45. So 10 more levels, and we will have ourselves a shiny Flygon. I still can't believe that happened. I don't remember the last time I found a shiny Pokemon like that. Just out in the wild, not even looking for one, and boom! It just pops up in front of my face. I honestly feel like it should happen more, though, because I think the odds are one in, like, 4,000, right? That's- is that the normal odds? I, I, don't, I don't remember. I think it's 4,048 or 4,096, something like that. And while that is obviously really, really rare, in an open world like this, in an open world like Pixelmon, I feel like we come across a ton of Pokemon all the time. So even though I'm not battling 4,000 Pokemon necessarily, I think I come across 4,000 Pokemon somewhat commonly, maybe? I don't know. 4,000 is a pretty big number, to be fair. So maybe not. Maybe it is actually as rare as it seems. I keep throwing away a bunch of random items that I don't feel like I need, but
but low key, I might want to start hanging on to them because I think I'm going to need them when I start breeding because the breeding system actually changed in the new Pixelmon update. So now you don't actually have a ranch block. You have like a, a breeding block or something. I forget what it's called, but pretty much you enter two Pokemon in there. Let's say we enter two Charmanders and instead of having to set the environment around it to fit that Charmander, all you have to do is enter specific blocks into the incubator that the two Charmanders would like. So for example, I'm sure that magma blocks might be a requirement or a bucket of lava, for example. Just a bunch of random items are typically needed for breeding Pokemon. So I think holding on to some of these random items might actually be pretty important. Oh no! Someone in chat just defeated a hidden ability Charizard. I did not know that the server lets you know if you ever defeat a hidden ability Pokemon. I feel like I probably have done that many times. I'm pretty sure to get a hidden ability, it's one in 150. And I think I've already eliminated more than 150 Pokemon in today's episode alone. So I certainly would not be surprised if I've already KO'd multiple HA Pokemon. And right now we are about halfway through filling up this orb. It is taking pretty long. It's been uh, about an hour now that I've been filling this thing up. So I don't know, there's probably more efficient ways to do it, but I figured I would do it this way because there is a chance that I get a Mew doing it this way as well. So even though this might not be the totally, completely most efficient way to do it, I feel like there's the most amount of benefit that could come from doing it this way. I just realized as well, Zardius is level 95. So, so I don't know if we'll get to level 100 in today's episode, but he's most certainly going to be dang near close. There we go, level 96. Speaking of the gosh dang devil, only four more levels left until we have our first level 100 Pokemon. Oh my god. Gosh, trying to hit these Joltics are so annoying because they keep jumping everywhere. Holy guacamole. Oh, not this again. No. There we go. What does a man have to do to get a stinking Mew to spawn? This is getting ridiculous. It's actually not. It, it hasn't really been too long. I wouldn't have expected one to, to, to spawn really, but who knows? Last episode, I accidentally got a shiny. So maybe if I actually try to do something on purpose, it'll work. Maybe? Probably not. I really need to start crafting some Pokeballs. Well, Ultra Balls, really, because I am dangerously low on Ultra Balls. I pretty much only have Pokeballs at this point, which is probably going to complicate things when I try to catch stronger Pokemon, especially Legendaries. So when I eventually do battle this Articuno today, I am going to try to catch it with the Pokeballs and Ultra Balls, but if it comes down to it, I might have to use my Master Ball. And if that does happen, well, then I'll have no more Master Balls. I'm gonna have to try to figure out some sort of automated system to get Pokeballs because I don't really want to do it manually, to be honest. Just Whoa! Okay, that's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever just seen an Aegislash like that. Let's see. Okay, that did a lot more damage than I thought it would. Okay, uh, now I guess, well, here we go. Kind of, this is my, this is my point. This is literally my point is to catch an amazing Pokemon like Aegislash, I have to throw Pokeballs at it, and well, this is likely going to take a very, very long time. But wait, is that a sh no? Look at that Volibee. That Volibee is like a bright. It, it, is this another one of those stupid textures? Look at this Volibee, though. Wait, is it shiny? If it was shiny, it would be sparkling. Where does it keep going? Ugh. Oh, I caught it. Okay, okay, I caught the Angel Slash, but where? Look at this Volibee. <gasps> it is! <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, uh, oh my gosh. There's no way. I can't believe it. I, I, I this is crazy. I, there's no way that I just found another shiny. Oh, yes. And we got a paralyzed. Let's go. What? Oh no, he knows whirlwind. That is like the most annoying move ever to battle against. No. Okay. So he can force me out of battle. I'm literally just gonna have to chuck Pokeballs at it. I hope it doesn't despawn. I'm pretty sure Pokemon have like a five minute timer where they despawn after five minutes. So if these Pokeballs don't catch it, which <laughs> honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, then this thing might actually get away. This is it. I actually can't believe Wait. Oh, no. Okay. For a second, I thought we had it. I can't believe it. I, you know, the craziest thing too is I've been talking about catching another shiny as well. And lo and behold, another one spawns in the middle of my battle with an Aegis Slash. Oh my goodness. I. Oh, there we go. We got it. We actually got it. Let's go. Oh 
My goodness, dude. I thought it was another one of those stupid Valencian textures or whatever. But no, it was actually shiny. Especially because I zoomed into it and it didn't have any of the sparkles on it. Normally, shinies are like sparkling. Is it not? Why is it not sparkling? Where are your sparkles, boy? Is Vibrava sparkle? Oh, you know what it is? I have my particles off, I think. I don't know why I can't see their particles, but I, I swear normally, if you're a shiny Pokemon, you have particles. Look at this thing, though. Oh, Oh my gosh! I almost feel like this series is turning into like a shiny only series. We have a shiny Charizard, shiny, well, almost Flygon, and almost shiny Mandibus. Dude, I actually can't believe it. I, 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 I don't even know what to say. I, I really can't believe it. This makes me want to catch like every single shiny Pokemon ever. But again, I don't really know the strategy to do it. I, I think I'm just getting really lucky and they're just kind of popping up in my face. That is two in two episodes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we don't find another shiny for like 10 more episodes, honestly. Our orb is starting to get pretty dang full, though. I would say it's about the 75% mark that we are kind of actually getting pretty close. Imagine if when the Articuno spawns in that that is shiny. <laughs> that would, no, that would actually be crazy. If the Articuno is shiny now, I might have to give up and just call this the grand finale of the entire series because I don't think we will ever, ever, ever get to that level of amazing in an episode ever again. I'm so conscious of shiny Pokemon now that every time I get in a battle, I look at their name to see if it's yellow. Like, I I don't even know why. I'm just, I'm addicted to shiny hunting now. I just got shears from a drop from Furfro. I think that you can actually use that on Mankey and then make it naked, I think. So, oh, not a Mankey, sorry, on, on a Mareep. Wait, can I use it on Wooloo? Wooloo, no, okay. Well, sorry, Wooloo, you're dead now. And I don't know about you guys, but I really want to see a naked Mareep. I'm sure it's got that padunk dunk if you know what I'm saying. I just realized earlier when I was talking about a shiny Articuno, I meant Zapdos. I forgot that I'm catching Zapdos and not Articuno. Oh my, this Corefish does what's no part in me. The Corefish? No, I will collect your soul. I will Oh my gosh, you cannot run forever. Yo, get cooked. I actually love lobster, so that would be very nice. Oh, a Magikarp. Oh my god. Oh, it is spinning. Gonzalez, Magic Carp has been set free. Oh, oh, we're just trying to parkour up this mountain. I'm so sorry, Magic Carp, but you will die now. Shiny Magic Carp is actually really cool. It's yellow. And then when it evolves into Shiny Gyarados, that is debatably the coolest shiny in the game. It is just one big giant red dragon, but it's not actually a dragon type. It's it's water and flying. I don't know why. Does anyone know why Gyarados is a flying type? It literally doesn't make sense. It's a sea monster and it doesn't even have wings. Can it fly though? Can Gyarados fly? I feel like it flies in the anime, but I don't know. I didn't really watch the anime. For some reason, I feel like it does. I don't know. Okay, I've kind of given up on the whole trying to spawn Mew thing because that I, I just don't think that's going to ever happen. And I was getting kind of bored of killing the exact same Pokemon over and over. So I went to this biome. I set a home here. I just called it Ice Thing. I don't even know what biome this is, but I'm pretty sure this is like an extraordinarily rare biome to find. And it's very refreshing to battle new Pokemon like a Bergmite, Vanalite. Oh, and there's Cup Chews too. I love Cup Chew. Cup Chew. Ah, oh, someone else caught another Ultra Beast in the War Zone, the Celesteela. I need to get to the War Zone and start catching these legendaries because I'm getting very jealous. I think what I'm going to do next episode is get a, like a random team of just like not even very good Pokemon, trade them all up to level 100 and go to the War Zone and see if I can catch any legendaries while I'm there. It could end up being a giant waste of time because I could go there and someone could battle me, beat me, and steal my Pokemon, and then it's just over. Or it could be like the best investment of all time. Oh, here's a Mareep. Oh, no, I just got rid of my shears, dude. That is so frustrating. I really wanted to shear a Mareep so that I could see it naked. I'm gonna, I'm literally going back to get my shears just so that I can shear the next Mareep that I see. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. Okay, shears. Boom. Easy peasy. Okay, next Mareep I see. <laughs> yes, all right here, okay. Come on, please work. Please work. What? Wait, do I have to... Maybe I have to catch it? Okay, there we go. We got Mareep. Now, can I... Yes! <laughs> Yo! Have you guys ever seen a naked Mareep before? <laughs> Look at that thing! Yeah! Shake it, boy! Be free, Mareep! 
<laughs> oh my gosh. That is too... Wait, it even changes the sprite. Look at the sprite. It looks like he just has like an afro now. That is too good. Oh! Oh my gosh. I mean, definitely very upsetting, but not much I could do. Apparently, I just defeated a hidden ability, Cupchu. I don't even know what the HA is on Cupchu or if it's good at all, but that still is very saddening. And I'm, oh, dude, I'm honestly upset that it shows in chat when you do eliminate a Pokemon that's HA, because I feel like that's going to happen all the time. And every time that it happens, it's going to be so upsetting because catching an HA is so, so hard. I would even say it's harder than finding a shiny because you don't actually know if a, if a pokemon is hidden ability until after you catch it but you know a pokemon is shiny before you catch it and you know obviously if a pokemon is a legendary before you catch it so pretty much what i'm saying is i think it would take a lot longer to get a specific hidden ability pokemon than to find a shiny of it i i don't know because finding a shiny is one thing but if you're targeting a specific shiny pokemon that's probably pretty challenging but if you're just trying to catch a hidden ability pokemon specifically then you're just going to catch a whole bunch of those one poke i don't know my point is fighting a specific pokemon and catching it with its hidden ability is extraordinarily rare and you don't know if a pokemon is hidden ability until after you catch it so when it pops up in chat that you actually eliminated a pokemon that is hidden ability it's it's just very sad that's all it's just a very sad thing but one thing that doesn't make me too sad is looking at my orb because it's almost full i've just been running around destroying pokemon for a long time now, let's say. A very long time. At least over an hour, maybe two hours at this point. I've just been destroying Pokemon. But we're finally almost there. It is finally almost time to catch these Zapdos. Or at least try to catch the Zapdos. If I did all this just to not catch the Zapdos, I am going to be so annoyed. Oh, I was about to take a sip of water. Why is this Amogo on fire? <gasps> Oh, it's a hunt. Wait, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hunts? Emolga? Hunt? Okay. If it's a male. Okay. Please. Be oh, there's another one. There's a bunch of them. Is it? No, this one's female. Okay. I'm sorry. Female, you die. We need to catch a male Emolga. No, another female. Come on. Surely we can find a male Emolga soon. And if we catch it, that means that we'll get some sort of reward because it's part of the hunts. Some hunts are harder than others. I don't know how anyone is ever supposed to get the impossible one, the one at the end here. So for example, to get any of the rewards here, you have to catch a haunter that has over 81% IVs is either growths of, of, of small or huge and has a nature of careful or docile. That is so challenging to do that. But to be fair, if you do catch it, you have a chance of getting a fusion shard, a fusion core, and a bunch of other amazing items. The Emolga, on the other hand, is only difficulty advanced, which is just finding a male one. So that shouldn't be too hard for us, especially because we are in the jungle biome. But that does obviously mean that the reward is not going to be as good as the impossible Poke Hunt reward. My heart just skipped a beat. I thought I had just found another shiny. But no, it's a stupid Valencian. It must be a Valencian Caterpie. Get out of here. Stop spawning. Those are so annoying. Oh, boys. I think, yep, our orb of static souls is finally full, which means it's time to go spawn in a Zapdos. Before I go, though, I do want to try to get this Emolga. I don't know what the best way to do this is. Let's just jump down and see if we can find one down here. Hello. All right, there we go. There's one on here, and this one is male. Perfect. Wow, we just destroyed my Fennekin. Okay, I'm hoping one Pokeball does the trick, and there we go. It does. What rewards did we get? Did we get anything? Oh, I got a red shard. Okay, I'm pretty sure if I get nine red shards, that I get the red... What is it called? The red orb? It's not a red orb. The It's like the primal orb for Groudon. Okay, that's actually really good. I'm certainly happy with that. There's actually two more little tiny quick things that I want to do before we spawn in the Zapdos. First is to take a look around the neighborhood. I did just release episode one literally earlier today, so there's not too, too many houses out quite yet. But check this out. Everyone is making their sky islands. This is looking so cool. Well, maybe not the coolest, but it's still definitely turning out pretty epic so far. Someone built a sky island here, and they spelled high backwards. I guess you have to read it from this way. Oh, let's go! This is the other thing that I wanted to do as well is evolve my two shiny Pokemon. But there we go! Now we have a shiny Mandibuzz, baby! Check this out! Okay, that is not right thing. There he is! Oh! Mandibuzz is sociable. I don't know what makes him so sociable, but apparently he is. And there we go! Now my Brava is evolving into shiny Flygon! Let's go! And 
And yeah. Oh, look at it's eyeball. Wait, it's see-through. It's literally see-through. I can see through his whole entire brain. That is so crazy. But check out how cool that looks, dude. Shiny Flygon is so sick. Let's go, baby. Ooh, I didn't realize this, but the Pokemon does sell Pokeballs. So I think I'm just going to spend... Wow, that is a lot of money. But I guess I guess I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend $11,000 on Ultra Balls. Quick Balls are 250 bucks. Oh my gosh. I am going to get a couple of them, but geez. Okay, now that that is done, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Holy guacamole. I just found $5,000 from this Christmas gift. Okay, sorry. I keep getting sidetracked. Oh, it's a 20,000 coin fee? Dude. I only have 36K used. Wait, can I use it? Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Boom. Zapdos has been spawned. I did not mean to start off with Charizard. Let's, um, I guess we'll switch out to Dragonite for no real particular reason. Oh, wait, I didn't even know. Oh, we know Thunder Wave, but it doesn't even, it doesn't even, that was so stupid. Okay, Dragonite, that was a big fail. I, I, that was stupid of me. I'm sorry for doing that. I Dragon Hyper Voice. Okay, that's a little bit. I don't want to kill it and it's getting a little bit weak. That would be so bad if I accidentally killed this thing. I'm pretty sure Hidden Ability Zapdos, by the way, is like really, really good. I think that the ability is static, meaning that every time anything hits it with a physical move, it gets paralyzed. So I highly doubt that this is going to be a hidden ability Zapdos, but on the crazy, crazy off chance that it is, that would just be amazing. Okay. 11%. We will take that. Oh, we did it. Let's go. Zapdos is mine, baby. Yeah. W in chat, baby. Let's go. Oh, and three XPLs. Dang. These Christmas gifts are OP. Four PP ups. Oh my gosh. Master Ball? Wait a hot minute. These are crazy. Lucky egg, dude. These are so good. $7,500? Oh, I got a daycare. I'm pretty sure that's what I need to breed Pokemon. Six strange balls. I didn't even know that's a thing. <gasps> I just got lucky blocks. I'm going to open the next episode. Hourglasses, dude. What? I didn't know that these are so OP. <gasps> Random Pokemon. Okay, I'm not going to bore you guys with finding all of these presents. Oh, an uncommon lucky block. Oh, let's go. That is guaranteed shiny Pokemon from that. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I keep getting distracted. It's really, really bad. But there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, here is our Zapdos. Yeah, boy. Okay, let's check the IVs of this guy. 79% perfect special attack, perfect speed, perfect defense. That is actually pretty solid. And I'm going to check. Okay, his ability is pressure, which is lame. It's not static, which is his HA. Oh, mm, I just got another orb. Dude, I just got a Mega Stone Cranky. These presents are so good. It's actually, in I actually can't believe it. Th this is insane. Hold up, I have to open this Mega Stone Cranky. Let's, what are we gonna get? I got a Beedrillite. Actually, I feel like that's kind of wimpy. I probably could have got a way better reward than that, but I, I guess I'll take it. Non-legendary resize, okay. 50-50 shiny key. Bro, I love Christmas. That was like like the best gifts ever. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. Zapdos is my first ever legendary Pokemon on the series. Stay tuned for episode four.